Folks, uh, we've been covering the story uh, dealing with the Alabama redistricting case, of course, and how the Supreme Court kicked it back and how Alabama has defied the U.S. Supreme Court because they want them uh, to take another stab at it. Now, uh, there was an investigation that was done that breaks down how conservative activist Leonard Leo, formerly head of the Federalist Society, the same guy who's gotten 2.6, excuse me, $1.6 billion from a conservative uh, billionaire to essentially use that money any way he wants to. This now has resulted uh, in, again, this dark money being used to fund many of these legal battles taking place all across the country. Well, based upon some recent reporting, what we are now seeing is how all of these things are linked together. Now, what's also amazing in, in, in the story that's being reported is that these conservatives, they, in essence, have said to one another that they've gotten the heads up that Brett Kavanaugh is likely going to switch his vote and likely side with them to keep from having to create a second black district. What their goal is, is to invalidate Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. Joining us right now from, from D.C. is Pennsylvania Congresswoman Summer Lee. Glad to have you on so, the show. Th this story, I know, Congresswoman... I actually haven't been able to hear uh, can you hear me? of what's been happening right now. So. Congresswoman, can you hear me? I can hear now, but this is actually the first thing that I've been able to hear Okay, so all right. Let's start it. Okay, uh, so not this sure. Is typical, this is in typical Zoom 2023 era that this is the first thing that I can hear. All right, so can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Got it. Okay, so we got you. All right, so um, so this, this, this story that people have been talking about uh, that details um, these, these various uh, conservative efforts uh, to impact the court, uh, what really jumps out in this story is this notion that they essentially have gotten the heads up that Brett Kavanaugh is going to rule in their favor. And so Alabama, when they hear this from this Virginia law firm, so their whole deal is perfect. We're just going to completely ignore the Supreme Court, pass new maps, and hope and we'll appeal this thing all the way back to the Supreme Court to get a second bite at the apple. So when you have these people who say you should not have more oversight of the courts, we literally have a Supreme Court now that is bought and paid for by conservative billionaires. Yes. And it's that open. This is, this is no longer, you know, an over, a covert mission. This is over at this point, right? We have a Supreme Court justice who is sending signals, smoke signals, you know, carrier pigeons, however they get it, they're getting it directly from a Supreme Court justice who is also paid off or, or, or bought, you know, by uh, the Federalist Society, by Leonard Leo, uh, and they're now making and taking actions with that in mind, right? So we know that this is going to lead or can lead to further erosion of the Voting Rights Act, like the implications on Black folks, on Black communities for this, you know, are immeasurable, immeasurable. And yet we can see, we've seen and we've heard the stories about, uh, before this case, we heard the stories about Alito being flown out. We heard the stories about, you know, Clarence Thomas and all the gifts that they're getting. We heard about how, you know, these, what folks are calling sugar daddies, right, are, are giving openly and explicitly to Supreme Court justices who are supposed to be the model of ethics. You know, they're supposed to be, uh, they're supposed to uphold, you know, justice and justice is supposed to be blind, but here we have folks who are unapologetic in, in their unethical behavior. And I, what still is baffling to me uh, is to have these members of Congress who believe that the Supreme Court should just be self-governing where they don't have to abide by uh, ethics rules. Uh, you've got uh, Justice Samuel Alito uh, writing op-eds in the Wall Street Journal uh, saying that, uh, no, you know, we're fine. You got Clarence Thomas, who now all of a sudden is reporting trips uh, and then going, oh, well, you know, I got advice from a friend and I have to do that. I mean, what's crazy to me, these are nine unelected people serve on the highest court in the land. Their decisions are final. And there's this brazen attitude of, 
we don't have to tell y'all a damn thing. Who we hang out with, we could take free trips, private planes, yachts, things along those lines, and oh, trust us, we're impartial. Uh, first of all, Brother Roland, I don't believe for half a second that there are members of Congress who actually believe that the Supreme Court should not have any oversight. What we're seeing right now is a decades-long effort from Republicans, from right-wing activists, to have a court stacked in their favor. And because it's operating, you know, doing exactly what they've been wanting, eroding protections for, for LGBTQ plus people, uh, eroding protections for black folks, making it harder for black students to go to school, uh, making it harder for folks to vote, you know, democracy reform, because they're actually doing all of these things that they've wanted, that they've been asked asking for, now all of a sudden they don't believe that the Supreme Court needs any oversight. They don't, uh, they don't believe that there are any ethics violations when folks are literally being flown out and they're spending time on yachts with people who will know and influence the outcome of their cases. If this were a liberal court and they were doing things like accepting luxury gifts, we wouldn't hear the end of it. If this was a court that was ruling in favor of civil rights, of rights for black folks, I, I, this would not be the reaction from, from the right court. So what we have to talk about is their hypocrisy. And we can't, we can never put our foot off, take our feet off the gas when we talk about their hypocrisy because they'll tell you one thing and you know they'll say one thing out loud and then they'll do another thing. And even if we see them, they will keep saying it until people believe them. Um, this is the story. It's from alreporter.com. Uh, and the headline says, Dark Money, the backstory of Alabama's redistricting defiance, um, and uh, by Bill Britt. And, and it is stunning, anybody who reads this story, and they go through it, and you see it, uh, and you see what is clear, what is brazen, where these conservatives literally, um, how you have uh, the paying of money to Jenny, um, um, to, to, to Clarence Thomas's wife, uh, and, and, and how that's being circumvented, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, and then how Leonard Leo is using all of these different organizations and shell groups to funnel money to various individuals. Uh, and then, like, here's a perfect example. It says, here, go to my iPad. In addition, there now appears to be a significant connection between Alabama's post-Milligan map redrawing process, Leo's powerful national dark money network, and Kavanaugh. The tangled web of previously unreported ties centers around Marshall, Alabama Solicitor General Edmund LaCour, dubbed the architect behind Alabama's voting rights defiance, and the D.C. area law firm Consovoy McCarthy, the firm founded by William Consovoy, a now-deceased former clerk to Justice Clarence Thomas, who represented Shelby County in Shelby County v. v. Holder. In Shelby County, the Supreme Court invalidated Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act and this vital pre-clearance provision, and it goes on and on. The thing that, uh, that also, that just, that is crazy, do progressives understand what these folks are doing? I mean, do they fully understand that these folks have multiple billionaires who are funding this because they want to control the Supreme Court because what they've decided is, if we don't control the White House, don't control the House, don't control the Senate, we can still control the country if we control the Supreme Court. I, I'm going to speak for a progressive. I'm, I'm going to speak for me. And, I, and absolutely, absolutely progressives understand this. Progressives understand this more than other people because we are also being attacked by the exact same entity to keep us out of office. When we think about the influence of dark money, we're talking about the Supreme Court. But this isn't the only place where we're seeing that influence. We're seeing that influence on, on Congress, on local and state government, and it's almost certainly tied to the exact same people. Paul Singer, who is one of the folks in this dark web, uh, this tangled web that we're talking about, is also in the tangled web of keeping progressive black women out of Congress. This money that's coming in uh, is only tangled uh, and only a dark, uh, you know, a tangled, dark, deep web because we don't have transparency, because we don't have protections since imposed in Citizens United, or Citizens United. And that is intentional. If we can't track where people are giving their money, where we can have organizations, super PACs, whatever it may be, who are able to collect money from 
billionaires who don't ever have to disclose, who don't have to be in the open with their hatred, don't have to be in the open with their racism, but can still make uh, moves, can still pull strings. Uh, we're seeing these connections all throughout our government and throughout our system. But people don't want to talk about you know, money and politics when we talk about democracy reform. But this all impacts black people. If we can't get black folks into the Senate, into the United States Senate, then how are we going to confirm judges who care and understand how important getting dark money out of the Supreme Court is going to be, right? So these things go hand in hand. Last question for you. Um, when I try to talk about judges and how critically important they are, people sort of gloss over it. Uh, there are a lot of African Americans who say, well, I, I want to see this, 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 this. And, and I keep saying, you could ask for a whole bunch of stuff, but don't think for a second that even if you get it, if it gets passed by Congress, you're not going to have some white conservative group sue to stop it from happening. Yep. The money going to black farmers. Uh, and we could go on and on and on in what we're seeing. We're now seeing Ed Bloom. They're now, they're, they've dropped their lawsuit today suing yep. West Point because the Supreme Court did a carve out in their affirmative action decision saying that uh, it's in the national interest to continue affirmative action. The military academies, they're now trying to sue West Point. They're not even happy with that Supreme Court decision. Yep. They want it all. And I keep saying to black folks, do not play around with the 2024 election because what these people want to do is going to have a direct impact on our children's children. And if we sit at home, and then I, I, mean, I had some dude shouted at me in the car in Atlanta on Sunday. Man, you keep talking about uh, the Democrats. I'm going, let me be real clear, player. I said, if the right wins the White House and wins the Senate, Samuel, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Lito, oh, they're going to retire. They want to lock down. And matter of fact, you may have one of those liberal justices retire. They would love a 7-2 hard right uh, Supreme Court and go appoint some other 45-year-old who's going to be there the next 40 to 50 years. And that's been their play the entire time. For decades and decades and decades, the Republican Party has been meticulously uh, implementing their judicial strategy went over and, and appoint people, extreme conservatives, to federal bench, younger and younger, because we know that these folks uh, serve longer, um, that Trump was able to get as many appointees is unprecedented and, and, and truly unfortunate. But we know that black folks are going to be the first and hardest impacted and have already been, will be again in 2024 if we get caught slipping. Affirmative action was, was, was the first and, uh, big hit that we've taken, but it wasn't a surprise. It was, it was no more a surprise than Roe v. Wade. Um, these are things that they've explicitly said they're coming for when they get the seats. They said they're coming for it if we win. And we keep turning a blind eye. But on the same token, we also need the Democratic Party to create urgency around that. Yep. Make that, make, you know, make the, the stakes known in black communities. And you can do that by supporting black candidates who speak their languages. We can't just say that we want black folks to come out and show out without showing them that we are going to support people who understand them. Who, who, who walk their walk and talk their talk. We can do both at the same time so that we can make it easier for black people to, to feel invested, to feel like they have a vested interest. But, but there's more to come. There's absolutely more to come with the Supreme Court. There's more to come if, if Trump is in office. So we have to make sure that we're covering all of our bases in educating and empowering the electorate and in, in expanding the electorate. We found women who are galvanized now because of the fall of Roe. Well, we need to go and get those same black folks who should be galvanized because Roe impacts us. The same black folks who are galvanized because affirmative action follows, falling impacts us. Black folks because uh, Citizens United impacts us, because queer uh, erosion of queer rights impacts us. We have to make those stakes clear to us. Well, it is definitely going to be one a busy year. Uh, and yeah, they are executing that strategy. In the, and I keep telling people, there's a way to stop them. Beat them at the ballot box. That's how you beat them, because if they don't win the White House and they don't control the Senate, they cannot appoint their judges. That's how Period. you beat them. Congressman Summer Lee, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much.